Hello, this is Gray Hughes. I'm doing an update today on Rachel Del Tondo. Apparently a letter was given to an inmate in jail and the letter explained how they saw Rachel Del Tondo get shot and hit the ground. This person is one of the people that law enforcement has already looked at. So we probably have talked about this person in some of the videos that I have made. Okay, but before we get started on this update, I want to say thank you to my newest Patreon, PayPal, and Super Chat donations. All right, so on Patreon, we have M22, the sniper rifle, Connie Morgan, and Justin Sarrett, or Sarrett. Not exactly sure how to pronounce that. And on PayPal, we have Sadie Brinham, Tobias Bevines, and Charlotte Roche. And on Super Chat, uh, Miss Rainey and LJ Moon. A couple times. All right, LJ. <laughs> Anyways, I've, I really appreciate those donations very much. Okay, so let's get started on the video right now. Exclusive. I heard the gunshots and seen her fall. Mystery letter sent to local inmate gives eyewitness account of the murder of Aliquippa teacher who had been suspended after she was found with a 17-year-old boy in steamed-up car. That's a little misleading because the incident with the 17-year-old boy was about two and a half years ago. All right, but let's take a look at this article. There has been a letter actually sent to an inmate that reportedly has details on the shooting of Rachel Del Tondo. Days after Del Tondo's death, an inmate at Beaver County Jail claimed to have received a letter containing details of the crime, allegedly written and signed by an individual who was interviewed as part of the murder investigation. The letter in part reads, I heard the gunshots and seen her fall. I don't want to be part of this. They won't send me to jail if I tell them what really happened. That individual who supposedly wrote the letter could not be reached for comment by either DailyMail.com or The Beaver Countyan, a news website in Beaver County with a focus on uncovering corruption in local government, nor could the authenticity of the letter be independently verified. But sources familiar with the investigation told the Beaver Countyan that the letter is currently a major focus of the investigation into the death of Pennsylvania cyber charter school teacher Del Tondo. Uh, the rest of you, if you haven't followed the case, I've made a whole bunch of other videos on it, and you can get caught up on, on those. This is just an update right now. The letter, claiming to hold details about the murder, further complicates an already muddied investigation. Isn't that the case? So this, this case is absolutely crazy at this point. The letter was allegedly sent to Beaver County Jail inmate Wayne Cordes by Kaylee Hill, 22, his ex-girlfriend and mother of his son, on behalf of another person. Inside the envelope was a letter from Hill and a second letter handwritten in red ink and allegedly signed by a friend of the inmate who claimed to be a witness to Del Tondo's murder. Kaylee Hill told the Beaver Countyan that a friend of her ex-boyfriend gave her the letter in the days following Del Tondo's murder. Now, if you notice above, it said he's an inmate. Wayne Cordes is an inmate. So let's take a look at him. I actually found him on the Internet by looking him up. Uh, he was on just an obscure website. You can see it right here on Times Online. Wayne A. Cordes 20 of 2312 Kane Road of Hopewell Township and Kaylee C. Hill 22 of 33 Shorty Lane, New Suwickley Township at about 6.45 p.m. October 26 at a home in the 200 block of Penn Avenue in Aliquippa. According to a police report, Hill told a man to meet her at the home. So the ex-girlfriend 
told a man to meet her at that home at 200 block of Penn Avenue. Police said when he got there, Cordis hit him in the head with a bat and demanded he give him his belongings. So it sounds like it was an ambush. Cordis then took the man's shoes, police said. According to the report, the man was treated in an area hospital. Cordis is charged by Aliquippa police with aggravated assault, robbery, reckless endangerment, simple assault, theft, receiving stolen property, and, and tampering with evidence. Hill is charged with conspiracy to commit the following charges. Aggravated assault, reckless endangerment, simple assault, theft, receiving stolen property, robbery, and tampering with evidence. So that's just a... Uh, a conspiracy so she's not accused of actually doing it but did she conspire to have it done it seems very likely right or it could be that Cordis found out about her meeting that guy at 200 showed up and actually hit him in the head with a bat okay now let's get back to the article Kaylee Hill told the Beaver County that a friend of her ex-boyfriend gave her the letter in the days following Del Tondo's murder. Miss Hill said, I was working at Circle K. The friend came inside and gave me folded up paper and asked me if I could send it to Wayne. Miss Hill said she put the friend's letter in an envelope with the letter she wrote and mailed them together to Wayne Cordes at the Beaver County Jail. She declined to answer further questions about the letter's authenticity. Wayne Cordes, 21, who was awaiting trial on felony, aggravated assault, and burglary at Beaver County Jail, told the Beaver Countyan he had received the letter. On the monitored phone call from the jail on May 26, Cordes told the Beaver Countyan that after receiving the letter, he had been interviewed by Beaver County detectives but is unclear how they learned about the letter's existence. I was going to give them this letter when the Beaver County detectives came to see me, but I didn't trust them. Cordes told Beaver County detectives he didn't know anything about a letter. Cordes said on a call, I am not worried about myself. I can handle myself, but added that he was concerned for the safety of others associated with the letter. The inmate's mother, Beth Cordes, told the Beaver Countyan that her son had told her about the letter during a prison visit on May 25th. The letter detailed some things about the Del Tondo murder, Beth Cordes said. My son ripped it in half. He gave his cellmate half of the letter, and he kept half of the letter because he is afraid it is going to go missing. Beth Cordes told the Beaver Countyan that she informed Pennsylvania State Police about the letter on May 26 because she did not trust Beaver County detectives or Aliquippa Police Department. Mrs. Cordes said two state police investigators told her they intended to tread as carefully as possible as to not put anyone in harm's way. On May 30th, Wayne Cordes' jail cell was raided. The Beaver County detectives executed a search warrant on Wayne's cell last night based on information received about the letter, his former attorney, Stephen Valsamidis, said. Valsamidis has since recused himself from Cordes's case. When asked about the raid on Cordes's cell and the letter, District Attorney David Lozier told DailyMail.com the search warrant was sealed, so I can't talk about it. The court order ordered the warrant to be sealed, so I'm not allowed to discuss it. And what's sad is, uh, for us, we don't get to see all the search warrants now because a detective that had retired, I think, came in and said, wow, what are you guys doing letting everybody see these sealed warrants? So now nothing's available for us to see. Wayne Cordes is now represented by defense attorney Gerald Benio. Beth Cordes told the Beaver Countyan that Wayne gave Benio the bottom half of the letter that he had torn in half, including the signature of its alleged author, before his jail cell was raided on May 30th. On June 5th, Benio told the Beaver Countyan, 
I can confirm that I was retained by Mr. Cordes to represent him in his pending criminal case that is scheduled for trial in July, as well as what I believe to be the subject matter of the District Attorney's Office search of Mr. Cordes' jail cell. And see right there, uh, he's referring to the letter, so it sounds like it really exists. Benio also told the Beaver County that he believed the rate of his client's cell has violated attorney-client privilege because legal documents were also seized along with the top half of the letter. So now the police have the top half and the lower half. On June 8th, ben, uh, on June 8th, Benio Law, on June 8th, Benio's law offices were allegedly raided by Beaver County detectives, according to a source with knowledge of the district attorney David Lozier's actions. DA Lozier told DailyMail.com, the search warrants in this case are sealed. I'm not allowed to talk about them. Benio confirmed he was placed under a gag order by Beaver County judge on June 8th. Benio said in a statement, as of June 8, 2018, I have been instructed by the court not to discuss issues which may relate to the Del Tondo homicide investigations. All right, let's take a look at where Wayne Cordes lives. If you see right here, it says 2312 Kane Road. I've already found these locations, but I'll put them in again just to show you on Google Earth. So Wayne Cordes lived right here, which really isn't that far at all from where Rachel Del Tondo lived, right there. I think it's 0.7 miles. All right, and maybe we can go down the street view there, take a look at it. So this is where Wayne Cordes lived, right there. And if we go back to the article, we'll see that Kaylee, she lived at 33 Shorty Lane. So let's put that into Google Earth. And that's over here, and I had already marked that as well. Now this appears to be a trailer park or mobile, um, maybe like a mobile home, actually or a manufactured home street. So there's no street view down the street, but it does have street view right here. So just keep your eye on a, that house. It's right there. So as we go to street view, it's gonna be one of these right there. So that's where Kaylee lived. All right, but she lives pretty far away from the rest of them. But apparently she worked at a Circle K and there is not a lot of Circle Ks around. So it's pretty ironic that Kaylee worked at a Circle K, and if you remember the night that Rachel Del Tondo was killed, she was traveling with Lauren Watkins, and they were hanging out, and they stopped by a Circle K. Now, wouldn't it be ironic if Kaylee worked at that very same Circle K? And also, if you remember the other videos that I did, I think, there was mention that Sheldon Jeter here actually followed them to the Circle K or something like that. Like the police had him on surveillance around that Circle K. So what if he is the friend that wrote the letter and sent it to Wayne in jail? All right, now let's go back to that letter again. Yeah, so if you notice right here, the incident where Wayne hit the guy in the head with the baseball bat took place at the 200 block of Penn Avenue in Aliquippa. All right, so if I put that in up here, hit enter, it actually brings you down to here. So it's around this area right here. Okay, so let's go to street view there, take a look at it. So, so one of these homes right here, a man was hit in the head with a baseball bat by Wayne and 
Kaylee Hill. Kaylee didn't hit, hit him in the head, though, but she's the one that appears to perhaps have set this guy up. But it could also be that Wayne just followed her there and was jealous and hit him in the head with a bat. Uh, she is, and the reason I say that is because she's his ex-girlfriend. So they weren't even dating anymore. So she has a right to date. However, then it's strange that she felt enough for him to then send him a letter that was given to her by a friend and that friend has been investigated in this case. That's why I think it's possible this person could be Sheldon because he's the right age. You know, he's 21, or maybe he's 20 right now. Let me take a look at the, the chart. Yeah, he's 20. Um, Kaylee was, is 22, and Wayne is 21. So that kind of all fits right there. They're all the same age, and look how strange this is. You guys remember Kenneth Watkins right here, right? He's the police sergeant who is the father of Lauren Watkins, and look where he lived compared to this. He lived right there. I mean, that's... <laughs> this is about... Let's do it in feet, even. Yeah, 369 feet, 100... A little over 100 yards away, basically, 100 meters. I mean, we can even just go to Street View here and go there. So after we get to that intersection, take a left, and he's right there. So let's do Street View, travel down the street here. And here's the intersection. And that's the police sergeant's home right there, this house right there. So that's a little strange, right? So the police sergeant's right there. His family members have had their cell phones taken as part of the investigation. A guy was hit in the head with a baseball bat down here. And that's the reason why Wayne is in jail. And then Wayne was given a note explaining what happened to Rachel Del Tondo that night by a friend who's already been investigated in this case. So do you see how crazy this is. And that is the update for Rachel Del Tondo. Absolutely an incredibly complicated case at this point. Recently there has been a sergeant put on administrative leave. The police chief was put on administrative leave. Then his replacement was arrested for sending uh, inappropriate emails to a young person um, of 17 years of age. I think they were just trying to get him on anything. So I think that they actually knew something more and they wanted to look into him. Now we have a person in jail getting a letter from one of the people that has already been investigated. In this case, it's absolutely crazy, right? So I'm going to keep following it, but it's just becoming a three-ring circus at this point. Okay, now if you'd like to subscribe to my videos, just make sure you hit that notification bell next to it. That would be great. Make sure if you actually like my video, if you can hit that like button, I would really appreciate it. And also if you could share it, like go out on Twitter and post my videos. I'm trying to get more and more people to watch my videos and to get more people to subscribe to my channel because I'd like to become bigger on YouTube, all right? That's the honest to God truth. I, I wanna have more and more people watching my videos because I think I provide a unique way of looking at cases. Sometimes it's a little more mundane and dry because you're just trying to get out some facts, but I put out uh, the physical locations and let you visualize the scenes as often as I can. All right. So that's all I have for you on this video. So until next time, everybody, be safe out there.